Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD744. So today, guys, we'll be doing my match reaction to all three of the games. Let's start with Croatia to Albania 2, guys. Croatia, man. It's looking peak. It's looking peak for Croatia. Because Croatia have now put themselves in a position where they have to win the final game. They have to. And not just win the final game. They might have to win it by a big margin. As for Albania, they also have to win the final game against Spain. But honestly, a draw isn't a good result for both teams. Obviously, a draw is probably a better result for Albania since this is only their second ever appearance in a Euros in their history. Whereas for Croatia, this is really bad. Let's look at the let's look at the lineup, right? Let's look at the top of the game. So Croatia started off terrible. You know, uh, Albania scored the early goal there. Great, great header in there from La, uh, Lachi. And Yasir Asani got the assist. And you're thinking to yourself, okay, Albania got the early lead. Can they hold on to? Because that was the key. Because remember, they were also in an early lead against uh, Italy. But what the difference was that they didn't park the bus like they did against Italy. And I think they learned from their mistakes. They went for the second goal. Livakovic made a big save in the 30th minute. There it was a huge save. Manage there with this chance there. Uh, let me see if I can show you guys the statistics. Right there. Aslani. Aslani. Huge, huge save. And the, at that point, you can see how bad Croatia were. Croatia had so much possession. 69% possession. But only created five shots and only one on target. Only one good save was made in the first half. Which was, which was the um, which was the Meyer one right there, I think. That was blocked, right? No, it was actually this one. It was actually... No, it was this one went wide. Um, they weren't able to... They, they, they only got a one big chance there from Brozovic. Cred to Dalic, though, and uh, Albania, w Albania, when um, Croatia upped their gear, they upped it up a bit. You know, they had 70 shots, nine on target, and Budimir comes off the bench and provides such an impact. He got the assist for the goal there for Cramridge. Great, great assist there, Cramridge, at the, at the, at the near post there to make it 1 1. And you know, that was a crucial goal. And then a few minutes later, Croatians are turning around. Kramer's lays a smart through ball to the Budimir. Budimir puts it into the box, and it's an own goal there. It was supposed to go for Sucic, but then it deflects off a of defender. Gudulis for the own goal. And it's so unfortunate. It just comes on, right? And the Croatia have another great chance there to make it 3-1. Kovacic goes for goal there. And then, obviously, Albania equalizer goes just slow. Terrible, terrible clearance from Croatia. I think it was Sutalo who made the mistake. And Sutalo, uh, and it's 2-2 for Albania. So, I think for Croatia, as I said, man, the big, the big issue for them was the midfield was so slow. They were so bad off the ball movement-wise. And you could tell that the Croatia players were just getting fatigued. Like, Brozovic was terrible. Modric, I didn't think, had a good game. And obviously, uh, Sital also had a bad game. I mean, Livakovic probably could have done better for the first goal. And the thing for Croatia is that it's really peak because defensively, they were so bad. Defensively, they were not great. Defensively. And I just think for Croatia, man... Is such a big, big missed opportunity because, like I said, they have to play their final game against Italy and they have to beat Italy. And guys, it's like a peak because they're minus three GD guys, minus three GD. Now, luckily for them, even if they do win, they'll be on four points, and four points is usually enough for one of the best third place teams to advance. Um, but still, we have to see what Spain does against Italy because that's assuming that Spain beat Italy. What if Italy wins, right? Then it puts it, then it makes things very, very interesting. So. The final match today should be interesting, guys. Obviously, I'm going to have Italy-Spain tomorrow. That's going to be a big, decisive game. And it's going to be interesting to see how it happens. And remember, guys, head-to-head -head is a tiebreaker in case points are tied. So just keep that in mind, guys. And for Croatia, as I said, man, they're probably on the brink of elimination. They they might be on the brink of elimination, guys. And as for Albania, great result for them. The third-ever goal for them. And it's just and it's kind of like redemption, Gajislo, because he came on, came on, scored the own goal, and then redeems himself by scoring a goal. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And for Albania, man, huge, huge result for them. And now gives their slim chances of progression uh, alive. Let's move to the next game we got here. It is Germany 2, Hungary nil. I'm going to say this right now, guys. I overestimated Hungary in this tournament. I overestimated them. And Hungary, for me, I, the, 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 are they the flops of this year's tournament? Now, keep in mind, they can still advance. It's not like doom and gloom. But they're going to have to beat Scotland in the final match. And give what we saw with Scotland, which we'll get onto a bit later, that will not be an as easy task. And for Germany, Germany played great. Now, even though the score is 2-0, and even though it seems like all of Germany, it was an easy win for them, it wasn't easy. Because Hungary had a lot of good chances this game. They just weren't clinical enough, especially Varga. Varga missed so many chances this game. But the thing for Germany is that they were so ruthless. They were so clinical, and that was the difference between the two teams. Because one team was clinical, one team wasn't. 
Great, great goal there from Musiala. Great goal there. Gundogan late and notches it, passes it to Musiala. Musiala scores, make a 1 0. I don't know what the Hungry defense was doing, though, because Hungry defense were so bad. And they had a great chance to actually take the lead in the first minute of the game. Neuer makes a big save. And uh, then that Havertz chance. How does Havertz not score that chance in the 10th minute? Because the issue with Hungary is that as good as their team is and as good as their expanse of their football is, they play so expansive that it makes their defense so vulnerable. And that's the issue for Hungary is that their defensively were so bad. And that's my issue for Hungary is that defensively were so bad. The second goal was scored by um, Gundogan. Great, great pass there from Middlestad, uh, the left back. And Gundogan gets an easy finish. And yet, uh, Hungary did have a great chance to draw a level right before halftime when it was marked offside. And Hungary just, just looked so bad. Hungary just didn't, weren't able to create any good opportunities whatsoever. And th they just weren't great. Now, they had a great chance to get a goal back right at the end when a, off, uh, the, uh, I think it was an off-the-line clearance was made in the 89th minute. But besides that, man, it was just terrible, man. It was obviously abysmal. Hungary were just not good attacking-wise. And they just were poor throughout the game. And they had some decent opportunities here and there, but not really anything threatening. And for Germany, man, they just look so amazing. Like, Musiala, man, what a fantastic talent he is. You know, Wartz was amazing. Gundogan, I know Wartz didn't score, but I thought he had a good game. Cruz was also great as well. Andrik as well. Kimmich, Rudiger, Ta, uh, Middlestadt, and Neuer. The only, the only player that didn't perform well today was Havertz. And I still don't know why Havertz is starting for Germany. I think Fulkrug should start. Because Havertz for me just isn't. Like, if you're going to play Havertz, don't play him as striker. Play him in the midfield. Okay. If you want to play, if you want to play, if you want to play Havertz, you got to play in the midfield because he doesn't work as a striker. He just doesn't work. Fulkrug has to play as a striker. And for Hungary, as I said, man, very disappointed. I thought Willie Orban was one of the worst players of the day. I thought he had a stinker of a game. He was pretty bad throughout the game. I might remember he made the error in the first game. And Hungary just looked all over the place. They looked all over the place defensively. Germany creating so many good chances. Germany could have easily scored two, three or more goals if it wasn't for Gulashi. And yeah, Neuer did make some big saves, but like ultimately, I do think Germany were the better team, and they deservedly won this game. A two 0 they confirmed their spot in the knockout stage, and basically, all they need to do for Germany is not to lose a final game at home. Even if they draw against Switzerland, they'll be good to go to get top spot. Okay, moving to Switzerland, guys. Switzerland versus Scotland, guys. Switzerland versus Scotland. This game was pretty crazy, guys, because Scotland. Showed up, man. Scotland actually put up a decent performance, guys. A respectable performance from Scotland. They took the early goal there. Uh, McTominay there with the goal. Now, it kind of took a little deflection out there, Fabian Schaar. And it's a bit of confusing there. because uh, it's a, So, McTominay's actually credited the goal there. But if you actually watch the YouTube highlights, it's actually uh, Schaar's own goal. But nonetheless, a great, great that pass there from McGregor. And the thing was, uh, Scotland is that they're able to create a lot of chances on the counterattack. It was kind of a game of moments, in my opinion, this game. And then, obviously, Shakiri equalizes there. Great, great, great goal there. Uh, terrible defending, though. It was this guy that made the mistake. Ralston playing off in the back. So many teams I see try to play at the back. And I said this before, guys. I'm going to continue to read at this point. You cannot play out the back if you don't have the players for it. And most of the teams just don't have the players to do it. It, it, may, it may work all nice and all, but you shouldn't do it if you don't have the players to do it. And you can clearly tell most of the teams don't have the players to do that. They're not good with their passing. Yeah, anyways, Shakiri equalizes there. Uh, then Switzerland had a number of chances. They had a goal, I believe, disallowed in the first half. It was offside. I think it was Endoya that got the offside goal there. And then, obviously, Scotland had a good amount of chances in the second half. And like I said, guys, this was a pretty end-to-end -end game. Like, um, like German Scotland had a lot of chances to uh, score there, as uh, Switzerland did as well. I would probably argue Switzerland would probably had the more better quality chances, I would probably argue. I think there were the uh, more quality chances, but... The thing is, like Scotland had some good chances themselves. You can see right there, they had a good, good, a good, good shot there. Hendry with the set piece there, and Adams there with the save. But the issue for both teams is that they just weren't clinical enough. In the second half, man, it was pretty crazy. Uh, Scotland had a great, great chance right there at the end to steal all three points when McGregor hit the post there. Big, big chance. And the thing for Scotland is that they just aren't. The, the issue with Scotland is just they don't have enough goals in them. That's the problem, you know. Because they, they are good at creating chances, but they just don't have enough. They just aren't clinical enough. And whereas for Switzerland, on the other hand, they, they could have scored more goals. Like, remember, remember, Mbola had a great effort there, a, 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 an effort there, 80th minute that was offside. And Andoya makes a big, uh, Andoya had a big shot there. Vargas as well had a good say, uh, shot there. Uh, Vargas as well. And the first time I remember, uh, Scotland, uh, is, uh, is, uh, the uh, Goon actually made a huge save right here. This was a big, big save for Andoya. Huge, not the save. What was it? Right here. Yeah. Enjoy. That was a huge, huge save there. 
So I think for Switzerland, as I said, um, they're in a good position. They're at four points now. And basically, they I believe, they, I don't think they have mathematically secured a round of 16. Um, no, actually, yeah, yeah, they actually have. Because even if Scotland do win, they won't have a better goal difference. Unless Scotland thrash Hungary, which is pretty unlikely. So yeah, basically, Switzerland have come from second. So now it's going to come down to the battle for this group is that third place. Who's going to get that third place? Because right now, the third place is between Scotland and Hungary. Scotland have the initiative. That if they win their game against Hungary, Scotland will be through to round 16. Whereas for Hungary, if they win, they, they, they'll they finish third. But it will depend on the goal difference. And I'll be honest with you guys, I don't think Hungary is capable of scoring four goals. I I don't know if they'll have enough GD in their favor. Because generally speaking, you need you need, you need need to have like a positive goal difference or a minus one goal difference at best. Because I think Ukraine qualified for the last Euros with a minus one goal difference with three points to round 16. So... For Hungary, as I said, they have to try to win big against Scotland. But the thing is, Scotland have everything to win. So it's going to be interesting, guys. That final match is going to be very interesting. Of course, taking place on Sunday. That will be hu two huge games, guys, to determine the third place battle. Because the third place battle is what's really interesting. Because I think we all, I think it's pretty safe to say that Switzerland is probably unlikely to be Germany. But you never know, man. So if Switzerland beat Germany, they can top this group. So it is going to come down to wire. So hope you guys did enjoy this recap. If there's any major talking points, please let me know in the comment section below. And yeah, man, crazy stuff indeed. So hope you guys did enjoy. So please run a like and subscribe and peace out.